I'm Roger. Roger on your radio. Ready to go for another four-hour walk down memory lane. Hi, and welcome to GCTV. I'm Bruce Logan. Joining us in the TV studio today is WSGE's veteran, Roger Burt. Roger is retiring from the station after 33 years as an on-air announcer. Welcome, Roger. Hi, Bruce. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your time at WSGE. Oh, my. 33 years. It is a long time. Everything has changed. The outside of the building looks the same, but everything in the studio is different. The outside, the different transmitter, different tower, different everything. From the inside in the old days at the start, we had turntables and reel-to-reel -reel, uh, tape machines. Uh, CDs hadn't been invented. It was only a few years in that we got the uh, carts, which people remember as eight tracks, perhaps, for their cars. And we started using those a few years later. But everything changed. I think we're currently on the third or the fourth redesign of the studio right now. Wow. It started out as a sit-down studio. And the chair we had was very squeaky. And my <laughs> wife would tell me when I'd get home, you need to stop moving. I can hear that chair squeaking. But from the second onward, all of our positions have been stand-up, which oh. after you've done it for a number of years is uh, quite a difference. I hear you. <laughs> and and the, the, the way the station ran. For the first 20 years, we didn't have a single paid employee. Wow. Not one. There was no station manager. The people were hired to run the broadcast course, and as a collateral duty, they had the assignment of running the station. But whether the station was on or off, they didn't get a penny more for their pay. So there, were, there was no paid staff whatsoever for approximately 20 years. Wow. We had a minuscule budget, a few hundred dollars a year. <laughs> wow. Can you tell us uh, what kind of music you play? Well... If you listen to my show, you know I play what I like to call the good stuff. The big band era, 30s, 40s, 50s. I have an interest in all kinds of music. It, people that listen to my show only think I like big band. I, I l enjoy country. I enjoy bluegrass. I enjoy 50s, 60s, 70s rock. You won't find uh, many people my age that have a Michael Jackson collection of videos in his collection. So <laughs> right. I have a very wide range of music. But when I started, I decided since no one else was doing the big band era, I would pick that out for myself. I'm blessed with a very good memory. And so I learned on the job. I started with an MOR, middle of the road show. I had some recordings I'd gotten from my father, big band era. As I played them, I, the phones <laughs> started ringing. Play more. Nobody plays that anymore. And I bought more. My collection now includes over 86,000 recordings. Wow. I have every recording ever done by the greats like Benny Goodman, Artie Shaw, Glenn Miller, Bing Crosby, everything they've ever done. Well, I'm kind of familiar with uh, Cap Calloway and Luke I've Ellington got the Heidi Ho man, hey. Cap Calloway. <laughs> Not oh. many people remember him today as a Heidi Ho man. Right. My most vivid memory of him is in the Blues Brothers. Right. In that white tux, yeah. he was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And basically, that's my first um, invitation or introduction mm -hmm. to Cab is through the, the Blues Brothers. It's the Heidi Ho man. Yeah. Because he appeared at the Heidi Ho Club. Oh, yeah. That's one of the things. I have all of these what I call useless memories in my head, <laughs> which are perfect if you're doing an oldies big band era radio show. Right. I could equally do an oldies country music show, <laughs> an oldies rock show, but I, I picked big band because nobody else was doing it. Okay. Okay. Can you tell me what it is that you like best about being an announcer? Being an announcer, not that much. What I like, and especially at a non-commercial station, because commercial stations have a playlist. You are not allowed to deviate from that playlist. Here at Gaston College, no one has ever said to me, Roger, play this, don't play that. I play what I want, when I want. Yeah. 
And for example, one of the true greats of the Big Band era, Artie Shaw, died in 2004 at the age of 94. It was Saturday. My show was Sunday. I have everything in my collection. I was ready to hit the ground running. Sunday morning, I did a four-hour chronological retrospective of Artie Shaw, starting with his first recording and going through his career. This is what makes it fun to me to be able to challenge myself. That's part of it. Part of the reason I, I'm retiring is no one's ever heard all of my shows, but I have. Yeah. And to me, it's like I'm getting to the point I'm doing everything over. It's less of a challenge. So different shows, I might do a show on, on the trombone playing band leaders, or I might pick out Tommy Dorsey, who was perhaps the greatest of the trombonists. Okay. And uh, so my challenge is to assemble everything, and whenever I do it, always chronologically. No one <laughs> normally would notice this, but I do. Right, right. It's part of my challenge. You're retiring. What's your plans? What are you, you going to do now? Uh, I've been retired from the U.S. Coast Guard since the 1st of January, 78. So there are no really different plans. I enjoy life. There are not enough hours in the day. I spend a lot of time on genealogy. When I started three years ago, I didn't know my grandfather's name. And uh, I have traced my grandmother, who was a Johnson, back to 1360. Wow. That's a long way. <laughs> I've, I've identified over 3,000 ancestors. Okay. So it's sort of like playing Sherlock Holmes. You never know what's going to happen as you open a door and uh, <laughs> see what's on the other side. Who are the parents? I found a convicted Salem witch in my family wow. tree. <laughs> okay. All right. I found my great-grandfather's uh, younger brother serving with the 7th Cavalry in the Dakota Territory in the 1880s. This is after Custer, but still... A lot of uh, symbolic stuff there. Yeah, a lot of inter a lot of interesting stuff going on there. Um, so, can you tell us when we will hear um, your last show? Well, my last show that's somewhat up in the air because I've offered to the station. I have the last six hours digitally recorded, oh. and, and if they choose to want to use them with just a little pre-opener that says, <laughs> this is from the best of Roger Burt, uh, July 27th, 2007. Or, but uh, the last planned show is, a, uh, and I've, I do this every year, it's what I call my Halloween special. Okay. It's songs that uh, have titles and meanings, things that go bump in the night for Halloween. And the last hour, for many years, I play uncut the original 1938 Orson Welles War oh, of the Worlds yeah. that got America really scared to yeah. death. Yeah, very familiar. So that's with that. the last show. Uh, things that go bump in the night, and that last hour, that special Orson Welles War of the Worlds. Okay. So tell me this what kind of people listen to? Well, you would normally think it would be the older set, but you know, part of what I really enjoy about this is the telephone calls, the emails, the letters. Uh, I, I can think of one fellow, he said, you know, I'm only 50 years old. Why do I love your show so much? I had one lady that recorded the show. In the earlier days, I was on five days a week, Monday through Friday in the afternoon. And one lady said, well, I, I have to record your show every day for my daughter when she gets home from school. And I said, well, how old is your daughter? Ten. <laughs> uh, I had one lady that called, that asked for a very obscure Artie Shaw recording. And I said, forgive me for asking, but can I ask how old you are? Most people wouldn't know that this record exists. And she said, I'm 27. Wow. And so while the majority are older, uh, it goes from 10-year-olds to whatever. All right. And, but and part of... What really has made it sing for me is a phone call, a first-time listener, and they'll say, wow, I didn't think anybody played this kind of stuff anymore. So I, 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 the part of me hates to stop this, but my knees and back, the arthritis are getting to me 
and uh, um, I just have to slow down a little. But I'll, I'll continue with the music, and if the station wants to use all of my digital recordings, they're welcome to do it. Is there anything that you would like to say to your listeners? Well, I suppose a thank you, because the real reason I did this for 33 years was for the listeners, the, the responses, the calls. Wow, I didn't know anybody played this kind of music. Hey, do you by chance have a copy of Record X? My grandmother used to sing this song to me when I was a young kid. All kinds of things like that. And so if I'd never had any callers, any emails, I think I'd have given this up long ago. It's the feedback from the listeners that sort of told me what you're doing is appreciated. And, and so I, I've always had these, what some people would be crazy emails. I had this one fellow all the way over in England who said, you know, I, I, we lost this record. I was in the jungle with the, the British Tommies fighting the Japs. And one day they scored a direct hit on our record stash. And I have been looking since 1941 for this Andrews Sisters recording. Wow. Do you know where I could get a copy? Well, of course I had it. And <laughs> I sent him a copy of it. And it, it just meant so much to him. And you knew that Burma played a large part in his life because his email address was Burma Elf. Wow. And uh, he made a donation to the station. He listened wow. regularly uh, on the Internet. So without the listeners and their constant feedback of telling me what they enjoyed, what they would like to hear, and out of 86,000 recordings, I can play about anything anyone can think of. What an amazing story. The legendary Roger Burt. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Bruce. And you certainly made it easy for me to do this. You will be greatly missed. Thanks for watching GCTV. I'm Bruce Logan, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>